Welcome to the Day 2 Podcast. Today, we are going to talk about the mind-blowing power of Amazon SEO. More than 65 to 75% of product searches begin on Amazon.com. I'm going to repeat that. 65 to 75% of people searching to buy a product online start at Amazon.com, not Google. And furthermore, When they do a search on Google, guess whose organic links are all over the first page of Google search results page? You guessed it, Amazon. So without SEO, you cannot be seen. Amazon is a search game with 2 billion products. SEO and search is the only way to be found on Amazon. And so if you're not doing search engine optimization, you are losing. Today is the first of four episodes where we're going to talk about laying the foundation that with that listing and that search engine optimization is the most important part. I'm Jason Boyce, founder and CEO of Avenue 7 Media, co-author of the Amazon Jungle and the host of the Day 2 Podcast. And with me today is Shannon Roddy, Amazon strategist, Amazon educator, uh, amazing biz dev person here at Avenue 7 Media. We can't live without him. Shannon, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Jason. I'm really excited about this episode. Shannon, you don't sound great. You got a little bit of the a goo, I think. I, I, I have survived. I'm no longer dying, but if I wanted to do a good, <laughs> okay, if good. I wanted to go, do a good Barry White impression, I, I'm sure I could do that. <laughs> we'll do that. It's we'll end with the Barry White impression. on me. So other than that, I'm doing really well. Well, we're going to talk about sexy SEO. Okay. <laughs> you can use your Barry White voice. All right. So number one, Shannon, I know that you are passionate about this topic. I know you're pas- passionate about listing optimization, and it really is. We call it laying the foundation. Nothing that you do for advertising will work without a good foundation. It's hard to compete with really good Amazon sellers if you don't lay the foundation. And SEO is one of those really important steps. And you know, when we give our client presentation, Shannon, we talk about the big sellers playbook. Right. And what's one of the first things we say that big sellers do? All of them understand the power of SEO. So let's share it with our, our viewers and our listeners today. What is search engine optimization and how should sellers think about it as they sell on the Amazon platform? Yeah, so SEO just means search engine optimization. Amazon's algorithm is the A9 algorithm. And the whole idea is that customers are searching for terms. And your goal is to discover, number one, what those terms are. And then two, integrate those terms into your listing. And three, advertise on those terms. The way I like to think about it, Jason, is sort of like a four-lane highway. You've got all this traffic. And that's the search volume for these different keywords that customers are searching for. And if you don't do SEO well, or you don't do it at all, you're going to be sitting on the side of the freeway watching everybody pass you by. But if you do keyword research correctly, and you place your product in front of that traffic with high search intent who are looking for the product that you are selling, all that traffic comes directly to you. And it becomes a goldmine when you can organically rank for your product's top most highly searched relevant keyword terms on the Amazon platform. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. It, it, not only are you sitting on the side of the highway, but it, maybe you're riding a bike, but it's one of those Looney Tune bikes with like the dent in the tire. So it's like thump, 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 yeah, thump. Exactly. You're riding there. Yeah, it, it, it's bad. If you, if you don't do SEO and um, you're not getting seen in the organic search results pages, uh, whether that's through the Prime app, through the mobile website, or through Amazon.com on your desktop, yeah. Not a lot of good stuff is going to happen on Amazon. It's just not. Yeah. Shannon, uh, second question. How do you perform SEO keyword research? How do you identify the best possible keywords for your product, for your listing? Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people, Jason, they do step one. They understand the best or most highly searched relevant term for their product, but they fail to do the full due diligence. And so what I'm going to do is kind of walk through the process that I use. You know, first you have to pick a tool. You know, Google Keyword Planner is not sufficient for Amazon. You need an Amazon specific uh, keyword research tool because Google and Amazon have different search intent. People on Google are looking for how and why. Amazon, they're only looking to buy a product. So pick a good tool. Personally, I love Helium 10. I know everybody has their favorites out there, but I just love the simplicity of the tool and the extensiveness of the keywords that it gives me. The first thing that I do typically is I start with competitor research. So I know who my top competitors are in the space, and I'm going to take their ASINs and I'm going to plug them into 
uh, Helium 10's reverse ASIN lookup tool called Cerebro. And I'm going to see what are the keywords that Amazon identifies as being related to their product. Now, just because their product ranks for those keywords, it does not mean it is going to be relevant for yours. So I like to start to gather these lists and, and Helium 10 makes it really easy to start to add these keywords to a list. But I, I want to make sure that I'm thinking about all the possible terms, right? I'm thinking about this in, in the biggest, broadest expanse that I possibly can. The second thing that I do is really in depth and not a lot of people do this. This is like the second critical step where a lot of sellers stop. I create what I call a list of target terms. And so I'll give you an example, Jason, for um, a deodorant client. And I love deodorant because there are so many different types of terms that can be identified. But I'll, I'll give you an example and just walk through the process. So the first thing I do is identify the primary keyword. In this case, deodorant. It's pretty simple. Um, but note that people do spell deodorant incorrectly. They spell it with an E instead of an O. And so I kind of want to just be aware mm -hmm. that there's two sort of alternate spellings that people commonly use to find this product. The, the next thing that I do is I make a list of all of the possible things relevant to the product. So this could be changed if it's a food product, if it's a skincare product, if it's an electronic product. But I like to map out what are all the benefits, right? In this case, it's all natural. It's healthy. It's for sensitive skin, right? The audience, is it for women? Is it for men? Is it for teens? Is it for kids? In this case, what parts of the body do you use it for? Most people obviously use it for underarm, but people spell underarm as one word and as two words, right? I like to use the whole body deodorant. Yeah, just uh, just rub the whole thing on. Yeah, right. So it's just like pour it over your head. It just covers the entire body. This, yeah. this particular deodorant can also be used for hands and feet. And so knowing that is so valuable to discovering some of what we call these long tail search terms. Next thing I go to is ingredients, right? This one was made with baking soda. It had arrowroot, coconut oil, cornstarch. Jason, and I promise you, most sellers are not doing this level of keyword research, right? Next, we have certifications. It's aluminum free, paraben free, eco-friendly, non-toxic. And then we've got the scents. It's got a grapefruit scent. It's got a lavender scent and a sandalwood. And it comes in a jar, right? It's a cream that comes in a jar. That is a boatload of terms that I then start to go through the process. And I, I next move to Helium 10's other tool, Magnet. And I start to put these keywords together literally one at a time. So I, I go through and I look at all natural deodorant. And I grab all of the relevant search terms that apply to my product and I add it to my list, right? Then I'm going through, you know, deodorant for women. I'm going through underarm deodorant and baking soda deodorant and aluminum free and the grapefruit and, and the different jars, uh, you know, or cream uh, deodorant. These are the kind of long tail terms that most people stop at. They're just looking for healthy deodorant for women. And that's kind of where they start. But, and this is so key, the more specific you can be with your search term, the more likely you are to attract the right audience and the greater the likelihood that they are to convert resulting in a sale. So that's that's how I start that process. Once I have all those keywords, I sort them by search volume and I look at the most highly searched relevant terms. Women's deodorant is probably a little too broad. It's probably a little too generic and probably a little too expensive. So I like to get a little right. more specific. Now I'm looking at really like the paraben-free, aluminum-free deodorant for women, right? And those are the keywords that I'm going to start with to launch my product. Shannon, I want to unpack this a little bit more. So you brought up a very generic top of the funnel keyword called deodorant. And then you highlighted, can you just reiterate, you highlighted four different subcategories almost within deodorant. Yeah. And each of those subcategories provides its own set of long tail keywords. So Absolutely. if it's deodorant, you mentioned, what, what were the three or four that you yeah, mentioned? So you I look at what listening? are the benefits of the product? Who's the audience? Where, what's the location? So for a you know, topical product, this would be body. Sometimes the location is where do you use it? You can use it for your car. You can use it for your house. Right. You use it at the office. Um, in this case, what body part is it for? What are the ingredients? Right. If it's a CPG product, what are the materials? What's it made of? Certifications, scents. It could be flavors. You could you know, choose colors if it's a t-shirt. And then 
in this case, type, you know, is it a cream? Is it in a jar? And so each product, Jason, will have its own target types that you sort of create and you think about it and go, okay, how can I describe this product, um, you know, in all of its facets and all of its ways? Because people are searching almost all of those terms. And, and the goal is to go through and do the keyword research and say, you know, people may not be searching for chemical free, you know, deodorant, but I don't right. know until I do the keyword research. And so, right. you know, you know your product better than any, anybody else. Don't sell yourself short and just think it's a deodorant for women because you are leaving money on the table if you fail to do this level of depth of, uh, of research. And Jason, this is how important this, this idea is. Keyword research, the foundational keywords that your listing is indexed for and that you advertise on for the life of your product depend on the extent of the SEO keyword research that you do. And I tell every client, SEO keyword research is the most valuable ROI driven activity you will ever do for your product. I typically take two to three hours to do SEO keyword research for a single product because that is money that I do not want to leave to the table. And specifically with Avenue 7, I want to make sure our clients get the full lifetime benefit of every sale for every single relevant search term. I want to go back to something that you mentioned, this reverse ASIN lookup. Can we unpack this a little yeah. bit more? You mentioned Helium 10's tool. I know that Jungle Scout with its Cobalt mm -hmm. tool has also a reverse ASIN lookup. And I'm thinking Seller Labs uh, has a product called Scope. Yeah. So there's a lot of these things out there. Can you can you break down a little bit more? What is this reverse ASIN lookup? So like? basically what the tools do is they look at what are the keywords associated with this product from an organic rank. So if you search a specific term, where does this product rank? Is it on page one? Is it you know at the top of page one? Is it at the bottom? You know, page two, page three, page four. And typically, what you find is as a product becomes a better and better seller, simply because of its sales velocity, it could mention some random keyword in the listing, and it winds up organically ranking for that, even though there's very little relevance to the product itself, right? So right. if you don't go through diligently and deliberately and pick out the keywords that are most relevant to your product and sort of just throw them into a list and, you know, okay, we're just going to use all these keywords. You're selling yourself short. You want to make sure that you exclude keywords that are not relevant because that can really hurt you when it comes to advertising. And, you know, another sort of tip with this, Jason, is I, I was working with a client. We were advertising their products with auto campaigns and they were really getting some really bad you know, ROI uh, on those uh, on those campaigns, they wound up going through and just removing the irrelevant search terms in the back end. And all of a sudden, those campaigns started to perform much better. So this sort of, old, uh, this sort of this archaic, outdated thing of, oh, the search yeah. terms in the back end, you throw every possible thing in the back end that you possibly can. Bad idea. You don't want to do that. We'll come back to the how to determine if a keyword is relevant in a minute. But if I if I go and use one of the tools, Jungle Scout or Helium 10, and identify a product that's a really good seller, yeah. that's a competitor. And it, I mean, is this is this how this ASIN works? I, I just take the, I grab the ASIN and the URL or down in the product details page for that competitor because I think it's close to my product. Right. And then I drop that ASIN into the tool and and it spits out all of the keywords that are converting for that product, will it also tell me like which are the best performing keywords by revenue or clicks? How mm -hmm. how much detail can you get when you use the? Well, you yeah. I know you like to use the Helium yeah. Ten tool. How how much detail can you get from that? It typically is showing you what the organic rank is of the product for that keyword and what the estimated search volume is. It's also you okay. know Helium Ten will also give you some additional data like how many other competitors are advertising on this keyword, right? How many other products are organically ranked? It's sort of giving you a, a level of competition. And yeah. so that can be valuable and important. But I basically strip it down to, is this search term relevant to my product? Yes or no, right? And, and, and so we're, we're kind of going through all the fluff. And so there's a lot of pages. I mean, sometimes you could have a product that's indexed for 4,000 search terms. You don't have to go through everything. But there's a great right. sort feature and filter feature that you could say, I want it to at least include deodorant. So just only show me keywords that should, you know, have deodorant in it. And that's going to narrow that down pretty significantly. 
Got it. Got it. And then, you know, I think the other the great thing that you, you mentioned about the long tail keywords, I, I don't know what the cost per click is for the keyword term deodorant, but I imagine it's probably $25. It's, I mean, at this lot. point it could be for every single click. Yeah. Um, it's, it's an outrageous cost, but if you find some of those keywords that have, uh, you know, some ingredients involved and the type and the location, the part of the body, all of that in there, it's a very long keyword. I mean, you may be able to find some really low hanging fruit, right? Maybe 10, 15 cents a click, maybe, yeah. maybe under a dollar. Is that fair? Yeah. And, and, and we'll get into this, but I, I think this is a perfect time to bring it up. I was doing some, some research, Jason, because I had typically always gone through and I look at Helium 10 and I say, what has search volume? Okay. What has search yeah. volume? Because that's what makes sense to advertise on. If it doesn't have search volume, why include it in my listing? And so, yeah, you don't even need to go to the next step in relevance if it's not, it's got no volume. Yeah. Don't bother. No volume, right? Don't away. waste your time. And Helium 10 right. will show you search terms that pop up, both from Amazon sort of auto suggest as somebody's typing in the search bar, as well as keywords that have maybe an Amazon choice badge. And it will say either NA or zero monthly search volume. And all right. that means, it doesn't mean that the tool's bad or wrong or anything like that. It just means that the search volume is so low that they don't have the ability to detect what that search volume is. Juice isn't worth the squeeze. Yes. Don't, don't bother with it. This was really fascinating. So I decided to test my hypothesis. And I looked at three separate clients' accounts. And what I did was I looked at all of the search terms over a three to six month period. So a pretty extensive amount of time. And I looked at not what I was advertising against my, my sort of target terms, but I, I looked at what customers were actually searching. And then I looked at whether or not that keyword showed any search volume in Helium 10 or not. And then I looked at the average cost per click and the conversion rate. This blew my mind, Jason. 30% across all three client accounts in very different categories, 30% of their advertised sales came from keywords that showed zero search volume in Helium 10. Oh, wow. So I take back what I said. So the, the juice is worth the squeeze with these that don't have traffic. That's exactly right. And so I, again, I had to question my you know, preconceived notion of, well, if there's no search volume, why advertise on it? And so going back yeah. and realizing, holy cow, 30% across the board, three completely separate client accounts and three separate categories. Not only that, Jason, the cost per click on average was less than half. In some cases, it was 60% less than keywords that showed search volume. This became that makes a sense. game changer for me, right? Because nobody's advertising on it. A majority of right. sellers are operating with that mentality of, if there's no search volume, why advertise on it? And this yeah. totally changed the game for me. So, and if that keyword is properly placed in the listing in more than one field, yeah. and you're paying to drive traffic through advertising to your listing, and it and it gets clicks and sales more than anybody else because no one's really paying attention to yeah. it, you can really catapult some sales through that. That's yeah. fascinating. And that's, that's fascinating. and that's where you know we look at these target terms. We talked about you know looking at the benefits, and we talked about the audience. It's true. And I will actually go through and say, okay, show me, you know, deodorant for women. And then I'll actually go through and say, do any of these include all natural? Do any of these include my ingredients? And there's right. a tool called Merge Words that allows me to basically dump all those keywords in there and combine them because I'll actually go to the next step, Jason, which is I'm not just looking for the, the search terms that customers are using. I'm looking for the search structure, meaning they search for primary audience ingredient. So deodorant yeah. for women with baking soda, for example, or they're searching baking soda deodorant for women. So ingredient, primary audience. Now what I can do is I can go through and even the keywords that showed no search volume, for example, like tea tree oil, um, I can go through and I can say, you know what, if people are searching for baking soda deodorant for women, I bet even if it shows zero search volume, I can advertise on tea tree oil deodorant for women. And even if I only get a couple sales a month, but I do that for hundreds or potentially thousands of keywords, those are going to pay off in dividends because lower cost per click, higher conversion rate. And I imagine those clicks that you're driving from ads are going to give you prime time organic placement for that keyword search as well. That's, that's and there's probably not a lot of competition on the ads. So that organic ranking maybe is above the fold. 
Is that accurate? It, it's exactly right. And you know, the thing is, yeah. if you're looking to organically rank in a, a top category, you're probably never going to organically rank for women's deodorant. I mean, let's just be honest. Right. You know, the, the right. big, you know, multi conglomerate companies, they've kind of got that, you know, dialed in. But what if you could rank organically for hundreds of these target terms that are slightly longer variations? And, you know, I think Take a Metrics came out with a, right. a study that they found a couple of years ago that the longer the term, the search term, the, the likelihood of converting to a sale was much greater. Again, because the sense. customer was being more specific about what they were looking for and they knew your product was yeah. going to deliver. That's beautiful. Shannon, look, we talked about these other tools and ways to identify keywords, but what about Amazon? If you're a brand registered seller, yeah. why wouldn't we go in and pull keywords that Amazon is saying people are searching for your products? Do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, you definitely can. I mean, Amazon, you know, look at Amazon advertising, their suggest keyword tool. But we keep in mind that that only works based on the search terms that you've already put into the listing, right? So if you haven't done good SEO right. for the listing, Amazon's not going to recommend good keywords. And Amazon okay. can tell you with some of the brand analytics data and that sort of thing, here's what your product is organically ranking for and what you're getting organic search for. But again, that only happens if you've already done the SEO keyword research and integrated it into your listing correctly. So Got we, it. we definitely can use you need both. You need both. And what okay. I like to do, you know, we're jumping ahead a little bit, but what I like to do is I actually use advertising to validate those search terms because I may think you know, yeah, look, my product is is perfect for, you know, natural deodorant for teens, for example. Or maybe it's a, you know, product that was geared initially towards women, but maybe usable by men. I want to find out, does this term convert? And what I can do is I can advertise on those search terms, look at the conversion rate, and look at the sales versus the ad spend. And over time, I may update and adjust and go, you know what, I thought this keyword made a lot of sense. In actuality, it doesn't. And so I wind up re-optimizing my listing from an SEO standpoint and doubling down on those search terms that I discovered that maybe I didn't realize before were a really great option. You know, it's interesting. This episode is about SEO, search engine optimization, how to identify keywords and place them appropriately. And look at us talking about advertising, right? They're so it married together directly into it. on the Amazon platform. You can't really talk about one no. without the other, can you? No. And, and Amazon really yeah. is pay to play. We tell this to our clients all yeah. the time. You know, years ago when you and I were both selling on the platform, you know, 10 years ago, there was no advertising. It was 100%. No. Those were the good SEO. old days, Shannon. The good old Those were the good old days. Good old days of <laughs> SEO. But at the same time, Jason, you know, I remember launching products before advertising. And if we couldn't get discover discoverability through organic SEO, it was really challenging to launch. And so yeah. there is a benefit to having advertising say, you know what? I hate being on page eight for the first six months. I really want to you know, expedite that. Uh, and, and you definitely can. That's great. So look, that we talked about a lot of ways, including on Amazon, Seller Central, Brand Registry, including a lot of tools, yeah. Helium 10, Jungle Scout, Seller Labs uh, with Scope. Um, so now you've identified keywords that have some volume or not, but are, yeah. but are, rel but are, but are you know, long tail. But how do you determine, what's your thought process? Take us through how you determine relevancy. How do I know this keyword is relevant for my product? Yeah. So I think the first thing is, how long that keyword is. So again, a single target term like deodorant, probably not relevant. I'm not saying it's irrelevant. I'm just saying yeah. it's not relevant enough. And I, it's not a good business keyword, right? It's yeah. too broad. That's exactly it. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of, um, you know, companies when I was doing coaching through marketplace seller courses, people would come in and have me audit what their agencies or consultants or what they were doing, you know, because they were doing their own advertising. Yeah. And I remember somebody, they were advertising a gluten-free pizza crust that was plant-based. And they were advertising on keywords like healthy food. And I'm like, guys, never going to work. I'm not saying it's irrelevant. I'm saying... It's were they advertising on the keyword bad tasting food? Because that's what that sounds <laughs> no. like, Shannon. But you know, it's okay. like you have to think about it. You've got you to start with specific and then you can get a little more long tail. But one of yeah. the things that I do, Jason, if I am trying to validate a search term, if I'm not sure if it's relevant, right? And, you know, maybe yep. I found something in a Cerebro in a reverse ASIN lookup tool and I plug it in, you know, and I go, I'm, is this relevant? I'm not exactly sure. What I do is I take that search term and plug it back into Amazon. 
and I scroll past the advertising because that's not relevant in this situation. And I look at what yep. are the top organically ranked products because that tells me what Amazon customers view as relevant. And you know, Bradley Sutton, the, the trainer for Helium 10 says, you know, a search term is what a customer has in mind when they search the product on Amazon. So whatever's in their mind, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a really funny story. I was working with a blender company and they had a blender brush that you used to clean the blender. And I was like, cool. So I searched blender brush and Helium 10. Holy cow, there's 5,000 searches a month. This is amazing. We could totally advertise on this. But I was curious and a little skeptical. So I plugged it back into Amazon. I did not know that blender brush was a brush that women use to blend their makeup to get together. It had nothing to do with a blender. And so we, we had to dig down a little deeper and discover that blender cleaning brush was actually the relevant term. So making sure that you're taking those search terms, plugging them back into Amazon, verifying, yes, these products that show up are similar to mine. That really helps me determine the relevance of a specific search term or keyword. Shannon, that's such a great point. You know, we always talk about the basics and blocking and tackling. I, I mean, what, what you just described there makes so much sense to me. Yeah. Put the doggone keyword in the search bar and see what shows yeah. up. Does it seem like it matches what your product is? If it doesn't, it ain't relevant. That is just like, you know, I think that sometimes sellers, I get this way too, we become so dependent and reliant on tools without realizing, you know, there's a really good tool called the Amazon search bar mm -hmm. that can really tell us a lot of information about that. So I think that's a really, really elegant, uh, sometimes the simplest uh, solution is the best solution. And I think that's definitely the case here. That, that's really good stuff. Okay. So we talked a lot about this and again, you know, we're here, we are talking about SEO and, and we've already talked maybe 30% of our time we spent on advertising, but now you've identified the keywords. You've identified keywords that are either high volume or maybe even not volume, but you think are relevant. Then you've gone through a simple process to determine, are these keywords relevant to my products? Does the, and more importantly, does the Amazon shopper think these keywords are relevant to my products? And so you've identified, you've got this nice list, robust list with different subcategories from the broad, broad keywords. You got short, you got broad term, long tail. Um, and what do you do with it? What's next? So you start by integrating it into your listing. And we'll discuss that a little bit more in future episodes. But you know, the most important heavily weighted search field on Amazon is the title. And that's where SEO that you include can make or break your product success. And so we always want to include the most highly searched relevant term in the title. And like I said, you know, we've we've looked at the target terms, we've looked at all the search volume. It's great to include most of those. And you probably can, can include quite a few of those target terms that we talked about, but not all of them, right? So again, we're going to focus on the ones that have more volume and more relevant. Um, and there's, there's what I call uh, keyword differentiators, right? So there's an element where if a product is maybe a muffin, you know, right? so you get these sort of pre-made you know, muffins and, and packages, you can, you can do keyword research for muffins all day long. But if it's specifically a vegan muffin, that is what I call a keyword differentiator, where it very, very significantly changes the intent of the customer. If they're going to buy your muffin or any generic muffin, that they don't really care if it's vegan or not. And so you have to be sure that if your product has sort of that niche focus, you've got to include the keyword differentiators. But you know, once you get it in, in the title, you've got to put it into the product features. You know, You can weave it in there. It's sort of this fine art of, of science and art of combining SEO while making it still look elegant and tell your brand story and, and have that authentic tone and feel. And, and you also want to include backend search terms where Amazon has sort of that backend search term field. And Jason, after doing this for 10 years, 95% of sellers are doing that backend search field. Absolutely wrong. Talk to me. Talk, well, so let's talk about, let's unpack that a little bit. What, what, are, what are they doing wrong and what should they be doing instead? Yeah. So the, the biggest thing that people do is they repeat search terms that are already in the title, but they will also mm. just repeat search terms. So they will put in the back end deodorant for women, natural deodorant for women, and they will separate it by commas. And part of this is part of a bigger picture element of people taking Google practices that you would do in the old days sure. when you had Google keywords. Um, you know, remember back in those good old days when Google actually asked what your keywords were? I, 
I look, I remember back in the Google days when overnight they would do a Google dance and then our main street store got sent to the back 40 and we lost our sales overnight. So yeah, I painfully remember those days, Shannon. <laughs> so the whole idea is people are taking Google practices and trying to apply them to Amazon. And so you want to make sure that the search terms that you're including only are individual keywords. You can do them in order if it makes sense, but they're really individual keywords, not separated by commas. And you're only including keywords that are not in the title. Now, Amazon says they don't have to be anywhere in the listing, but because we do re-optimization over time, Jason, we're going to be changing yeah. the product features. I don't want to have to think about the search terms every time I do a re-op on the product features. So right. what I do is I, I, I update all the search terms based on any keywords not in the title. And you don't have to do stemming. So if it's runners and running, Amazon knows that those are the same. You really only need to do one. Um, so don't worry about plural. Don't worry about plural. Amazon looks at okay. that as the same. Um, and again, if I had all of these target terms, like I said, that I that I had pulled out for this client and done keyword research on, any keyword that was still valuable but not in my title, I would just add to the back end. So for example, if I've talked about it as a, a deodorant for women and maybe even for girls, I can also put teen, I can put tween, I can put you know girl, uh, you know kid or child in there if it's for kids and children as well. And that means you know the way that Amazon's A9 algorithm puts these together is if somebody searches for a search term that's in the title plus a keyword in the search term in the back end, Amazon will know it's relevant. And it's validated by conversions. Got it. So let me ask this question. You mentioned two keywords, two phrase key, keyword phrases, uh, deodorant for women, deodorant for girls. If the word deodorant is already in the product title, do you even need to put deodorant in the search terms in the back end? You just, you just say for women, for girls, or just women, girls? Just women and girls. So typically in this, in this case, if, if your title ca calls it a deodorant for women, you would only need to yep. put girls, teens, children as a separate keyword, individual search terms, and you don't have to. just spaces, no commas, and and use every one of those bytes, every one of those characters. Absolutely, available. absolutely. That's great. Are you listening, sellers? Yeah, That's this gold is, right I, there. Seriously, um, ninety five percent of sellers do this wrong, and so the benefit is if you include irrelevant terms that can mess you up for auto campaigns and advertising. So. So in some sure. cases, Jason, honestly, we've had products where you only have five additional search terms that you put in the back end. If that's all you have, right. that's all you use. You know, you don't have to fill it yeah. up if it's not relevant. The other thing that I like to do is once you advertise on these search terms, you get validation over time. And we realize that, wow, people really love this as a deodorant that is paraben free. But if they're just looking for a natural deodorant or a healthy deodorant, it's not converting. Yeah. Sometimes you update the listing. Yeah. Sometimes you realize, you know what? This search term isn't as relevant. Customers really value this. Let's pull this out and let's double down. And that's just part of that relentless optimization that we talk about all the time. It's never good enough. It's never done. You're always going back and auditing to see what you've done. How is it working and how can you make it work better? It's never said it and forget it like Ron Popeil said, right? It just never is. You got to constantly... You know, you're, you got to think of yourself as a shark on Amazon. If you stop swimming, you die. I actually don't know if that's true or not, but I think it's a good analogy. And, you know, I, one other thing about placements, and I know we're going to talk about this when we start building out the listings and the copy uh, as part of this sort of four-part series on laying the foundation with great listings. But I think I heard Franz say this from Selix years ago, um, and we continue to, you know, to, to use this, but if there's a keyword phrase, there's multiple fields where you can put keywords in. There's the product title, there's bullet points, there's description. And if you duplicate the same keyword in more than one field, then there's tremendous benefits. There was no additional benefits if you triplicated it. I don't think triplicate's a word, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and and you, do you have any thoughts on that? Is that still the case? And and do you buy into that, yeah. that methodology? I do. I have two. And again... The first part of it is, you know, we talk about the difference between a listing being indexed for a term and a listing organically ranking for a term. And so I had a coaching client call me up and they said, Shannon, I've listed my product. I have the word, you know, let's say it's a bike helmet. I have bike helmet in there 50 times and I'm still on page, you know, 10. And I'm like, yes, adding the word bike helmet again is not going to help you rank higher. Amazon has already indexed your product 
for your search terms. The only thing that it looks now for is how many times does a customer search that term and convert because that's what's going to drive up your product's organic rank. And so the more a customer searches a specific term, whether it's advertised or if they find it organically in the, you know, in the search results, the more a customer searches a term, adds your product to cart and buys it, the more your product is going to increase in organic rank for that listing. So when people talk about duplicating search terms in the listing, there's two parts that I, I look at. When a customer searches a term, it's important that they see that search term in the listing to validate that they found what they were looking for, that this product is in fact right. an all natural deodorant, for example. And so sometimes yeah. it's not that adding it two or three times, you know, Amazon magically made it increase in organic rank, but it does help a customer know that they have found the product they were looking for and it helps the conversion, which in turn helps the organic rank. So the other way to think about this, Jason, is Amazon and, and Google, again, very different. Google likes repetition. If I've got a product, mm -hmm. a page that I want to rank for on Google, I am repeating the same thing in the title tags and the H1 headers, first sentence and, you know, in the last sentence and multiple times in different variations throughout the copy. Alt tags, all, all that jazz. Amazon doesn't care about that as much. If it's indexed one okay. time, it's indexed. Now, the only thing it cares about is sales and conversion. Clicks and sales. That's it. It's clicks and yeah. sales. Yeah, we talk about that all the time. What matters most That's to it. the Amazon algorithm? Clicks and sales. That's so. it. But Got it. you can optimize your listing on Amazon to rank both for Amazon and for Google. We, we talked about that. In fact, you mentioned at the beginning of the episode, right? Yeah. Google has yeah. all these organic placements. Sometimes it's for a category. But if you repeat certain keywords... And it's also can, it can also be in the URL of your product, if it's in the title, and if you do A plus content, there's a place for keywords as you upload your images for A plus content. Those are those search phrases like deodorant for women. Again, this is something that a lot of people do wrong. Amazon will index that and use that for its internal you know indexing, but it really does much more value for Google. So doubling down on your terms can help your uh, Amazon sales, number one, by reaffirming customers that they're getting what they were searching for. But number two, if it helps you your product rank on Google, now all of a sudden you're getting traffic from both sides. And uh, CellZone... And Amazon loves that external traffic in the algorithm. They love it. CellZone now, yeah. SEM Rush, owned by SEM Rush, um, they've got a great tool that you can actually look at an ASIN and see what the organic ranking of that ASIN is on Amazon, on Google. And that's a gold mine. Wow. So you can actually see, wow, how much organic traffic am I getting to my Amazon listing from Google? Because I've optimized, I've optimized the listing the way Google wants and the way that Amazon wants. And that's really what you, you want. So people have to understand the algorithms are different, but you can optimize for both. You know, I get this a lot too, and, and you kind of covered it, Shannon, but I just want to negate this one. So since we're talking about keywords, I'm going to negate it for our, for our listeners. Why not? If, look, if, if I, if I want to rank for a certain keyword, why not just stuff it? Why not just put it everywhere? You know, I mean, it, I get that question a lot when talking to brands, let's put the keyword more times, more times, but there really is nuance. There's science to it. I mean, of all the things that you've talked about throughout this episode, Shannon, um, you know, it, it, it's sort of, it's sort of a weave, right? Yeah. It's like oh, there's all these different threads that are involved. We talked about advertising. We talked about research. We talked about relevance. We talked yeah. about Google. We talked about placement. Mm -hmm. And then you got this whole unique thing about how to place keyword terms in the back end. So, so wrap it up for us, Shannon. Tell us why keyword stuffing is a bad idea just once more before we wrap it up. Yeah. I mean, again, you're, you're not just writing for the algorithm. You're also writing for a human being. And I would rather right. have a search term in there one time with a really beautiful listing that does a great job conveying the brand and the features and benefits so customers convert for that term because that's ultimately what's going to drive organic rank. And people forget that and they go, do your, you know, do your bullet points as these giant paragraphs and stuff as much keywords as you can. If you overwhelm and confuse customers or you put so much content that they don't read it, what's the point, right? So it's a yeah. it is a balance. It is a balance. It is an art and a science, not one way is perfect. Some brands, you know, it works better for uh, doing it one way than another. 
But but the main idea is you have to remember that you're writing for a human being and an algorithm. And that's where this great process of blending those two comes together. Yeah, that, that's great, Shannon. Look, thank you for, for sharing all your, your terrific knowledge about SEO with all of our listeners. Uh, folks, this is never an algebra equation. It's always calculus. There's so many yeah. different factors and um, elements that you have to consider. Hopefully, you can take this and, and use this to improve your business on Amazon. Also, if you want someone to just do this stuff for you, if you're ready to start growing and protecting your brand on Amazon with a team of experienced Amazon operators, you can reach us at the day 2 podcastcom That's day, the number two podcast.com. And lastly, if you find value in the content that we're providing on YouTube and on this podcast, please share it with a friend. Until then, Shannon, thanks as always, and uh, happy selling, everybody.